Welcome to Market Matters video update. I'm Sean Hickman and I'm joined by James Garrish. G'day, Sean. Nice to be here again. <laughs> the new Harry. Absolutely. Okay, let's look into the performance from, from August and then we move on to reporting season. Yeah, it was a, 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 a uh, interesting reporting season in August, and that dovetailed into the, the uh, portfolio performance I'm just going to speak of now. So uh, in terms of our active growth portfolio, we had a soft month. We've spoken about positioning leading into August in the last couple of videos around our uh, overweight resources in the active growth portfolio. That hurt us in August, as it has done over the last couple of months. The portfolio was down 1.4% for the month. Uh, that was versus the index, which is up about half a percent. So the ASX 200 accumulation index is benchmarked against this portfolio, so underperformance there. If I step back and look at inception, I think this is really important because when you run a high conviction portfolio, um, you're going for outperformance over the medium time frame. So okay. three years to five years. Yes. Um, so you've got to be prepared to have some underperformance in the short short term to shoot for that longer term outperformance. And uh, still happy to say on a three year view, the portfolio is up 9.38% per annum, which is uh, a bit over two and a half percent above benchmark. And from inception, it's up 13 and a half percent for year per, per annum, which is over 4% above benchmark. So uh, short term, the monthly performance has been weak. Long term, we're sticking with our strategy. In terms of the income portfolio, it was down uh, about 34 basis points for the month. It has an RBA cash plus four benchmark, uh, which was up 0.7. Uh, inception to date, it's up about 9% per annum, well ahead of its benchmark. International equities were down 0.7 for the month. Uh, that outperformed the broader weakness in the MSCI World Index in Aussie dollar terms, which was down 1.2. Uh, that's up 16.7% per annum since inception, Sean, uh, which is nearly, which is uh, about nearly 4% above its benchmark on a per annum basis. The emerging companies portfolio was down 6%. That was our weakest portfolio. Uh, that was against the benchmark of down two. Inception to date, it's about 1.41% per annum above its benchmark. And then the ETF portfolio, which is a newer portfolio in our stable. Uh, was up 0.3%, uh, slightly underperforming its benchmark, which is the RBA cash plus 3%, uh, and it's up 9.85% per annum since inception, which is about 5% ahead of, ahead of its benchmark. So I know a mouthful there. I think the key <laughs> takeaways, uh, Sean, uh, softer month in August, but all portfolios are running uh, well ahead of our, their benchmarks from inception. So we're pleased with that uh, that metric. No, exactly. And I'll, I'll speak for a few seconds so you can breathe. Uh -huh. You know, we've got a position that is slightly overweight resources, slightly overweight cash. And as most people probably know, the banks have kept on running strongly. And that just pushed us behind slightly. But overall, we're happy with what we're holding. We might and probably always will tweak around the edges, but we're not just throwing the baby out with the bathwater. I think the, the important thing is, so there's five portfolios here. So um, we've got a, a, an active growth portfolio, high conviction, which is aiming for growth. It's aiming for above benchmark returns uh, with uh, around 20 positions. The income portfolio would suit suits investors who are looking for more stability. Yep. more consistency in income. And you see that in the volatility in these portfolios. So um, we regularly uh, run volatility metrics and risk metrics across portfolios. And you can clearly see what each portfolio delivers and how it goes about delivering those returns. So if you shoot for higher returns, you're going to have more volatility. The international equities portfolio is... Um, is growth but less resource focused because the US market is less resource focused. Uh, and then the core ETF portfolio is a portfolio that is uh, considered like a, a balanced approach, 60% in growth uh, uh, assets, 40% in more defensive bonds, etc. So a more diverse portfolio. So I guess there's a portfolio for everyone on the Market Matters website. Um, so it's really about picking the one that suits your objective, Sean. Yeah, and it's really important. I can be guilty of it at times. You mustn't get too close. These portfolios are going to travel over time. We are here for the long term. Market Matters have been going for about 10 years. We intend to be going for 10 or 20 more at the very, very least. Um, and so if you have a bad month or two, and it's frustrating, um, you've got to look beyond that and say, OK, obviously continually evaluate each position, each mindset, but is it what we want to be in? That's an important point. So um, should we hold something today for tomorrow, irrespective of your entry price. And I think taking some of these emotions out of um, making decisions in the market is really one of the things that we can help uh, members with, um, is having this you know, non-emotional, more analytical mindset that we employ across portfolios. Anyway, enough on portfolios. Reporting season, um, Sean, because there's a lot to take out of it. My 
uh, you know, my high level um, view around reporting was that FY24 was actually pretty good. Um, but FY24 has started a little bit more cautiously for companies and their guidance. So, I mean, this is this is not new news. We've got a lot of uh, macro uncertainties playing out in terms of interest rates, uh, in terms of um, uh, elections coming up over in the US and a whole raft of things that are playing into some uncertainty across uh, equities and the economic landscape going into FY25. So I understand why corporates are being a little bit more cautious, but I was actually pretty uh, pleased with the level of detail and the, I guess, confidence that some uh, management teams had uh, in terms of their guidance for FY25. Uh, we learned a lot. So I think we learned um, that consu- the consumers are holding up, but it's not holding up everywhere. It's still patchy. Um, I think the banks uh, showed with CBA reported the others gave trading updates that they're improving margins, which is really important. I think from a resources standpoint, I think operationally, there's still some struggles there. Cost pressures are still uh, obvious across the resource space, uh, and that's dovetailing into weakness on the demand side. So coming from China, a theme we've written about extensively. Uh, and then there was some you know, bits and pieces around Australian construction. I think the Australian construction market remains still pretty tough. The US probably looks a little bit better in that yep. um, uh, in that uh, environment. But I think there was enough in reporting season to get us, you know, to keep us reasonably optimistic about what comes next. Oh, totally. And I think at the end of the day, you know, if you're on a board of one of you know top 200 company, for example, and you're looking at an economy where they're looking for nine or ten rate cuts in the U.S. over the next 12 months, it means people are uncertain about the economy. So why wouldn't you put yourself in a position where you underpromise and look to overdeliver? And that's exactly what we saw. We saw some solid numbers where people just said, just calm down a bit. We think well, things are looking good. They're on track, but let's not get too carried away. Mm, it's prudent. Absolutely. I think the the, the other interesting um, uh, standpoint around uh, positioning, and you may mention the US economy um, or, or our economy locally, is around um, you know what's built in. So this Goldilocks scenario. So there's ebbs and flows around weak economic data now, meaning that we're headed towards a recession. I don't think we're there yet. Um, I think that the, the, the probability suggests we're still going into that soft landing scenario. I know the market, and we've written about this uh, a couple of times this week, the market's latching on to weaker data and getting concerned about it and selling stocks off or particularly growth-related stocks off more uh, acutely. Uh, I don't think the economic data supports that view just yet. I think you've got to you know, keep eyes open, but I don't think the economic data is suggesting that we're going into a recession, even though what bond markets are pricing is pretty aggressive on the interest rate side. Uh, it's very aggressive, and we try not to talk about it too often, but at the end of the day, there's also recessions and there's recessions. If we have a, a quarter or a couple of quarters of, of low or negative economic growth, but it just stabilises and then pe- pe- people start to get the benefits of lower rate cuts, well, that's not a bad thing anyway. So we're sitting here uh, to start uh, September. We've come off a reasonable reporting season. The outlook for FY25 uh, remains reasonably positive. I think it's going to be a case of um, being very selective in the companies you own, active positioning around portfolios. That's certainly what we'll continue to do. Sean, thanks for joining me today. This month's Market Matters video update. Bye for now.